This presentation examines the z-test for one proportion. First we have to establish when this test is fair, and the z-test is fair when the conditions for the normal approximation to the binomial are satisfied. Recall that means NP and NQ must be large, N is the number of trials, P is the probability of success on a given trial, so in a sense NP is the number of successes, similarly N is the number of trials, and Q is the probability of failure on a given trial, so NQ is the number of failures, so if we're going to use this model we need the number of successes to be large, and the number of failures to be large, and we usually want that to be at least five. The test statistic we use here is z, which is going to equal p hat minus p, divided by the square root of p q over n. So here's an example. We're going to say h naught p equals 0 0.4 versus h a p is less than 0 0.4. This is a one-tailed test to the left. We'll just make note of that before we continue. Now here's our information. We're told that there are 17 successes out of 50 trials. So p hat will be 17 out of 50 and as a decimal that is 0.34. So we want to go ahead and compute our test statistic. The test statistic here is z. z is p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq over n. p hat 0.34 minus p. p is 0.4, the number we are using in our null hypothesis. pq, p will be 0.4, q will be 0.6. q is simply 1 minus p and n is 50. So here are our numbers, and we are going to go ahead and evaluate this using Excel. So you'll notice I've put in some headers, p hat, p, q, n, and z, and I've plugged in the numbers that we need here. p hat is 0.34, p is 0.4, q is 0.6, and n is 50. So this is going to equal p hat minus p, p hat minus p, divided by the square root of pq over n, p times q over n, and that will give me negative 0.866. So my test statistic z is negative 0.866. And now we want to find the p-value that corresponds to that z. So recognize this is a one-tailed test to the left. We're going to look at our test statistic z, and we're going to find the area to the left of that test statistic. So this is a z-distribution, a standard normal, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. z is negative 0.866. The p-value will be the area to the left, because of the less than sign, of the test statistic. And we're going to get that area from Minitab. The what we're going to ask is CDF, negative 0.866, normal 0, 1, since it's a Z, normal distribution, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. And the probability that comes back is 0.1932. So this area is 0.1932, and that will correspond to our p-value. So our p-value in this situation is 0 0.1932. So there's our H0 and HA, and there's our p-value. But if the p-value is large, what do we do? We're going to say, since the p-value is large, we fail to reject h naught, And then we want to go ahead and say what that means in context. And if we fail to reject h naught, that means we don't have enough evidence to say that h naught is true. Excuse me, HA is true. h naught may be true. If we fail to reject h naught, there's still a possibility that h naught is true. So we conclude that we do not have enough evidence to conclude that the sample comes from a population with a proportion less than 0.4. The population proportion could be 0.4. Not enough evidence to say that the overall population proportion is less than 0.4. It might be 0.4. So here's another example. This is H naught P equals 0.7 versus H A P does not equal 0.7. The difference here is this is a two-tail test. So we're going to need to go to the left tail and to the right tail to determine the p-value. So here's our example. We're going to say there are 82 successes out of a total of 100 trials. So our p hat, which is the number of successes divided by the number of trials, is what we're looking for. And of course this is reasonable. We have 82 successes and we have 18 failures. Both of those numbers are large, so the normal approximation to the binomial holds, so it's fair for us to use this z-test. 
Next, we're going to go ahead and get our test statistic. So our test statistic Z is P hat minus P divided by the square root of PQ over N. P hat is 0.82 minus P, which is 0 0.7, divided by the square root of PQ over N. P would be 0 0.7. Q is 1 minus P, or 0 0.3, divided by N. How many in our trial? 100. So there's our numbers, 0 0.82 minus 0 0.7 divided by the square root of 0.7 times 0.3 over 100. And I'm going to get these numbers on Excel. So we have p hat is 0 0.82 and p is 0 0.7. So p hat is 0 0.82 and p is 0.7. Q, of course, is 1 minus P, so Q will be 0.3. And N, I believe, this time was 100. We had 100 trials. And the nice thing about this that you'll notice is that Z is automatically computed. It's using the same line of code that we used last time. So our Z value here, our test statistic, 2.6186. Or rounding it to 2.619. So now that we have the test statistic, our next goal is going to be to find the p-value that corresponds to that z. So there's our h naught and h a. Recognize this is a two-tailed test. Z is 2.619. So we're going to go ahead and put 2.619 on the right side, but we're also going to put negative 2.619 on the left side. And the p-value is going to be the small amount of area beyond 2.619 here, the small amount of area beyond negative 2.619 here. We're going to ask Minitab to find that probability, and Minitab likes to measure to the left, so we're going to ask Minitab to do CDF negative 2.619 with a normal 0, 1. Because this is a Z distribution, a Z distribution is normal, it has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So this little probability that comes back is 0. 0.0044. So there is 0, 044. 0044 in the left tail and 044 in the right tail. So we can see those two tails, those two probabilities. And the p-value is the sum of those two tails, since it is a two-tail test. So our p-value is twice 0 0.0044 or 0 0.0088. So looking at this, where are we now? We have our H0 and our HA. We have our p-value here, 0.0088. And then we ask ourselves the question, is that a small p-value or is it a large p-value? And typically the cutoff point is 0 0.05. And certainly relative to 0 0.05, 0 0.0088 is small. And when the p-value is small, our conclusion is to reject H0. So in this case, we will indeed reject H0. And then what does that mean in context? Well, the researcher's goal was to show that the proportion was not 0 0.7. And assuming that it was 0 0.7, the likelihood of getting numbers this extreme or more extreme is very small. So the chances of getting a sample like the one we had just by random chance is 0 0.0088. And since that's so small, we say, well, the likelihood of H0 being true isn't very high. So because assuming it's true, chances of getting something this extreme is very small. Therefore, we conclude that we have sufficient evidence to conclude that our sample comes from a population with a proportion different from 0 0.7. The preponderance of the evidence suggests that our sample comes from a population whose proportion is not 0 0.7. And that will conclude this presentation.